In Matthew 16, verse 13, we read, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. The question he asked, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And then he asked, who do you say that I am? It is interesting that Jesus takes his disciples here to ask this question. They are in Caesarea Philippi, and in this area, the people here, pagans, worship the false god Pan. This god Pan is supposedly all of the gods in one. At this exact area, there is a cave. Jesus is standing next to it. This cave was known as the Gates of Hades, according to Deuteronomy 32. It was named as such because it was so deep, many believed that it led straight to hell. Now, for context, the belief is that hell is at the center of the earth. I am of the opinion that this is the case. And let me give you some reasons why I believe this. First, we know that the Bible is constantly making mention of Sheol, or hell, being beneath the earth. We see this in Psalm 55, Proverbs 9, Proverbs 15, Isaiah 14. Two, we also see that um, the earth is enlarging its borders, according to Isaiah 5, 14. So I wonder, do sinkholes have some kind of a link to this? In Jonah 2, we see that Jonah descended to hell in the earth. Luke 23, 42, paradise is under the earth, divided by a chasm, this park known as Abram's bosom. This is described as a place where the righteous saints went before Christ's death. They were not able to go to heaven until Christ did, as he is the firstborn among the saints. This acted as a temporary holding place, i.e. the Garden of Eden. Christ ministered here three days between the time of his crucifixion and his resurrection, and that would be in paradise or Abram's bosom. We see that in 1 Peter 3, 19 and 20. Christ descended first to earth, then to paradise, according to Ephesians 4, 8 and 9. Abraham and Sarah were buried at the entrance to paradise at the cave of Machpella, Genesis 23, 17. And according to Matthew 16, 18, hell is under the mountains of the earth. Now, as a means of worship to this false god, Pan, they would commit acts that I cannot name on YouTube involving animals, specifically goats. They would then throw these goats down the cave as a sacrifice. If the goat came back up, it was not accepted. If it did not come back up, it was received. Jesus is standing here where the pagans worship their one God. And he asks, who do you say that I am? This is the big question. Every God is worshipped here. Am I just another God? Do you recognize me as the one true God? Or just as one of the many gods? He then ends this whole discourse by strictly charging them not to go tell everyone this revelation. Not everyone will get it. If they don't arrive at this conclusion by the revelation from God through the Holy Spirit, 
they will have difficulty accepting it. Paul said one plants another waters, but it's God who yields the increase. You see, that's what makes a good lawyer, I'm told. You don't tell the jury what happened. You would present the evidence. You ask the right questions to get your witnesses to admit as much of the truth as they will. And based on how you direct the questions and present the narrative, you want the jury to arrive at the conclusion on their own. Let them realize it. If you tell them what happened, then ask if they believe it. They may say yes. But if you present the facts and let them come to the conclusion on their own, they don't just believe it. They can explain their point. They don't just believe because their parents took them to church and it's what they are supposed to believe. It becomes real to them. That is what Jesus is doing here. And that is why he says, don't tell anyone. They may believe you. If they don't, they try to have me put to death for blasphemy, which, by the way, they did. Hey everybody, this is Philip. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to be talking about hell over the next couple of weeks, and I would really appreciate any comments, questions, concerns you may have about it. Uh, I'd love to discuss this. I'm actually going to be writing a book on hell in the future. And so um, I thought I'd, I'd kind of get a little head start and do some research. And I've been really excited about some of the stuff I've been finding. So I wanted to put this out here for you. Um, but please leave a comment down below. I would love to see what you have to say on this. Um, this is a very interesting topic, one that I think that it isn't covered very often in churches today. I also wanted to give a shout out to my new book, Concerning Spiritual Gifts. This is a book talking about the nine gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. I talk about the difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry gifts and the gifts of service and uh, their respective roles and how to operate in them. I do talk about are the gifts for today, have they expired, and I go in depth on that. And so I really would encourage you to get this book. Also, if you are not ever hearing from God, if you don't feel like you're getting answers from God, I have an entire chapter in here on how to hear God speak to you. And uh, it's just a it, uh, stuff I've learned over the years, some of it from Steve Sampson, who has a book called You Can Hear the Voice of God. Uh, that's a great book, by the way. I would encourage you to get that. But I just wanted to uh, take the time and, and let you know, check this book out. 12 bucks on Amazon, uh, $2.99 for the Kindle version. Um, help support me on that. I don't know who is purchasing this. Amazon tells me how many I have sold, but not who has purchased them. So if you have, again, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know what you think of it. I'd love to hear any feedback on that. And uh, if you have read it, I would really appreciate a um, review on Amazon. Uh, I've got one of them. So I'm, I'm trying to get a few more reviews on that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, thank you again for taking the time to um, view this video. Please like, subscribe, follow, depending on what platform you're on. Thanks. God bless.